So far, so good? Yeah. Yeah, when you mentioned, like, I remember before they mentioned, like, it could be a hero, but the same, uh, as, like, as good as a persona, and it could be, and your shadow might be, like, in the inside, you might be a monster, but it could actually work the other way around, too. It could, like, you, at first glance, I've heard some people, uh, I've, I've seen some examples <laughs> where, like, there's, like, this big monster, everyone seems like he's the bad guy, or he's a villain, but literally, uh, for that per- perspective of it, as it turns out, he's actually a good guy in the end, or, like, he's actually trying to help people, so it turns into a misunderstanding. So just because case? he's a bad guy doesn't mean he's a, a bad, bad guy. guy. Yes. So there's an example there. We also see, like, there's also a very famous monster. Hmm? There's also another very famous monster who's like that. Whenever I ask you guys to describe monsters, a lot of times people have described this from your childhood. Is it like... Yeah, a big monster who's actually a nice person. Is that a gen... Oh. I don't even know the name of the person, because I never saw the movie, but... Is it... I just, I'm just aware of the character. Is it BFG, Big Friendly Giant? What, what have you seen? Huh? What movie is that person? Oh. You, you... Come on, go back to your childhood. Oh, wait. Is it the one from Monsters, Inc.? There's, 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 there's... It's the one from Monsters, Inc. Yeah, the one from Monsters, Inc. Oh, oh yeah! Oh! oh Kitty! Who? Kitty! Chitty? Yeah, that's literally what the kid in the movie calls the blue monster, Kitty. The Chitty it is. Oh, yes. It's Chitty it is. Is it Sullivan or is it Kitty? Because either yeah, way, it's the same thing. And you look at him and you're like, oh my god, he's terrifying. And he's just like, I'm just me. <laughs> <laughs> like literally that one scene where he literally sits behind the closet, but that's his job for making sure there's no monsters in the door. That's his job? Well, no, but... To make sure there are no monsters? Even I though he is a monster? I keep my uncle out all the years. <laughs> right, so you've got this caregiver, and if you're, if you're this person who's trying to, to give care, nobody around you is accepting it, it stops you from being able to be what you are. Now, if you can't be what you are, what are some side effects of that, possibly? Positive, negative, negative, negative. Going the other way around. Is that? Going the other way around. I don't know what that means. Backwards. Think, uh, think outside. Skr, skr. Walking back. What do you mean? What, 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 if you can't be who you are, think just obvious. Don't think too, too broad. Don't think too um, deep. Too, uh, I don't want to say don't think too deeply, but that's what we do. <laughs> don't think too, um, Convenient. don't be too complicated about it. You can't be what you are. How do people respond to this? Is that a chicken wing or is that a yeah. Wait, how do people respond or how do you respond to it? I don't know how I respond to it. How do people respond to it? I agree. The people. Yeah, people. Okay. You can talk about, we, we can talk about ourselves. I talk about people all the time in here. But we all know it's what I mean. It's mostly like you can't really be yourself in here. Obviously, you can't be yourself, but it's kind of like a restraint. It kind of feels like positive. What would be an emotional response to that? I can't think of that word, but it's like... Kind of like... Mm, when you're claustro- not claustrophobic, but it's like that word where you're just... Trapped? Kind of trapped, yeah. Okay. So you can start to feel trapped? Because you can't express, you can't be what you really are. What is an emotional response to this? Self-flagellation. 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 That, that's different versus being yourself. Oh my yourself. god, he's here. No, 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 no. Thank goodness. Finally. We're trying to come up with words and we're all like, we're no. Sergio, we need words. Finally, bounce. So, so if you're self-isolating, this is absolutely true. Now, what's, now, this is a, an action. What's an emotional response to this? Oh, oh come good. on. It's 2022. Like, everybody... Self-reflection? <laughs> oh, that's, not a, that's an action. An emotional oh. response. Oh, depression? Oh, yeah. There you go. So maybe you start to feel <laughs> depressed. Yeah. You start to feel depressed. You start to feel Sorry. anxious. So you're suffering from depression, anxiety. And all of this because you won't let your grandmother feed you. Oh, my So I guess you're right. You're all a bunch of pieces of shit. <laughs> Thank your grandmas you. Don't let them know grandmas see this. I wouldn't take food from my grandmother because I know it's got poison in it, man. <laughs> so now, here's the thing. If you can't be the thing that you are, now what we'll start to become is the thing that we maybe are expected to be. Someone mentioned earlier this thing about expectations. So maybe you're going to, because you can't be the, the caregiver, you're going to try to be the hero. And everybody likes to be the hero. We like to watch movies. And everybody likes to be the hero until we realize it comes time to, to do hero shit. In other words, what is it that makes a hero a hero? Yeah. Selfless. So they have to be selfless. Oh, man, but we want to be the hero because we want all the, 
all of the, uh, the adoration, we oh. want all the praise. But in order to be the hero, you've got to be selfless. So there's a problem there. Yeah. <clears throat> what else? What else did the hero do? Or what else is the hero? Virtuous. Virtuous. Oh, wait, you mean I gotta, like, tell the truth and stuff? I have to do the right thing? But I want to be the hero so I can do whatever I want. And eh, the hero doesn't do whatever they that's want. That's what the villain. Yeah, that's what the villain does. That's what the villain does. The hero is here. The thing that we show the world. We wouldn't want to be known as being selfish and unvirtuous. We want to be known as being selfless and virtuous. That's the persona we want to show. So the, the hero, therefore, is going to be the personification of that, of that uh, persona. What else does the hero do? <coughs> By the way, I asked this question. I don't know that we're going to know this. This is one of those things that you intuitively know. If I tell you what it is, you'll be like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Well, I feel like the hero is a, a person who wants risk you to save others from the Oh, sure, they're going to they're gonna risk. <laughs> i got to hear this. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, like, sacrifice you to save others, like other people. Sacrifice. And then the villain is like the person who will, like, will watch the world burn just for you. <clears throat> okay, so I guess we'll call it utilitarian, meaning that they're willing to sacrifice <laughs> the one for the good of the many. Who's the one that they're usually willing to sacrifice, by the way? Average citizen. Average You're welcome. They're bulletproof, but they put you in front of them just so they... God, yeah, that's yeah. awful. Wow, oh, so when Shira comes in here, that high. makes me very, very, uh, very much the hero. I'm willing to sacrifice everybody. Oh, not funny anymore. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. I Sounds like a we war. Are, we, have our, we have our martyrs right here, man. <laughs> I got you. Just to let you guys ahead of time. <laughs> what else did the hero do? Oh, oh, yeah. Wait. Uh, uh, sacrifice, like selfless. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's one like major thing. It's it's the thing that we kind Carry? of want. huh? Caring? Eh. Oh, it's cringy. Maybe fine. I care about us. Yeah. Okay. I care about. They also overcome. That's what makes the hero the hero. They overcome the challenges. That's one of the things that makes them. Oh, like the character? I mean, I mean, think about it. If you guys watch, you know, you know, watch one of the Marvel movies and, they, and the heroes <coughs> just get their asses kicked and then that's where the movie ends. They're like limping home with their torn up suits and the bad guy wins. We sit there and go, good. <laughs> it's like a this is, this is, yeah, this is fulfilling. I like this. Like a fit anymore? Like a what? Like, in, like a Mar Avengers Infinity War? Oh, with that. Uh, then that would end it, though. I mean, they well, come back. well, they didn't feel so they come back. Yeah. In, in that movie itself, they kind of did. Literally. But that was the thing that kept us waiting for the next one, right? That's why we knew there was a next one. Because it wasn't like, we looked at that and we said, wait, that's not how the archetype works. The hero has to overcome. And we're sitting going like, wait, when's the next one coming out? And then, you know, they said, well, soon. Oh my god, when? Here's our money. <laughs> it earns billions of dollars. Why is it earning billions of dollars? Because we don't want the bad guy to win. We recognize that. So, this, so the, the hero is selfless, virtuous, utilitarian, caring, but also the hero overcomes. And then in order to overcome, by the way, in order, that sometimes means exactly this thing here. They have to be, like you were saying, self-sacrificing. Because they have to give up what they presently are to become something greater than what they <coughs> presently are. In other words, by sacrificing themselves, they become, I hate the term, but they become a better version of what they are, a better uh, version of themselves. And that's the thing. And that's why we look at certain movies, the superheroes, we just sit there and go like, oh, but that hero didn't evolve. That hero didn't improve in any way. They didn't get better. They just started off, you know, badass. And even if we have heroes that are badass, we still have to have them overcome some kind of a struggle. And that's why they become these models for us, because we recognize that they're overcoming struggles. And we look at it and go like, well, I don't have to overcome Thanos, but I do have that noisy neighbor. Or whatever. So I'm gonna go kill What's that? I'm gonna go kill Thanos. <laughs> okay, man. All right. That's bullshit, by the way. How that movie ends? Yeah, with start uh, with uh, Tony. Tony, no. Wait. I began with an S. How do you get a, a T from an S? Huh? Star Lord. Star Lord. Yeah, the good, cool, the good one. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can't, he can't control himself. He has to start punching. Come on, dude, you're winning. It's almost over. He oh, my, and, he, oh. and he could just be like. <laughs> <laughs> Deep breath and walk away. My girl. This is what, and, and that, by the way, this is what drives us crazy about him because we can sit there and go like, what the hell is wrong with Star Lord? Why couldn't he just shut up for five? I don't know. Why can't we just shut up for two minutes? <laughs> why is it that when we're right on the verge of victory oftentimes, we just snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? We sabotage ourselves at the last possible second. Things are just going too well. We're overcoming. 
and then we somehow make an absolutely stupid mistake. Because that's what we do. We're human. Because we recognize, yeah, we're human. We were both of these things. He's, we have this persona of him fighting selflessly, and then he slips into the selfish shadow. And he, starts to, and, he start, and he messes up the whole operation of, of, of killing Thanos. Because he is selfish. He becomes the opposite of this thing. He becomes the villain. <coughs> and that's why we have to be careful about the. If you remember from the very first quote we looked at this whole year from Nietzsche. We have to be careful about the abysses into which we stare. Because if you stare into the abyss, the abyss also gazes back into you. We become the things that we hate. We focus on, yeah, and we become the things that we, and, and it's true, we become the things that we hate. Now, there's this, there's this popular interpretation that we hate those things because they're us. I don't, I don't know that that's the case. I don't know that that's the case. I think that, that these things are, that they're the parts of us that we hate, sure. But there are lots of parts of us that we don't like. But we are all of those things. It's like I said, if someone gets you angry and they won't, they won't leave you alone, and then you punch a wall, and you know, punch a hole in the wall, and then the, you know, the person gets scared, and you're like, oh, oh my god, that's <laughs> not me. I would never do that. Yeah, you would. That's exactly who you are under those circumstances at that time with that kind of a pressure. But that's good because now you know what that line is, and now you know what you're capable of. Or your limits. What's that? Or, or like your limits. Yeah, exactly. You know what your limits are. And the only way that you learn what your limits are is by exploring, by going out there and finding out. You ever see a, a little kid, <clears throat> like however old this is, with their parents, and maybe they're at a park or something like that, and then they kind of wander off, and then they stop and they look back to see where their parent is, and then they go a little bit further, and they stop and they turn back to see where their parent is. Their parent represents their whole explored universe. The only places that they have ever been are places that they've been with their parents, likely. Like sure, uncles, aunts, so forth, but you get the idea. So that means that wherever mom and dad are, that's their whole universe, that's their whole world. So when they start to go a little bit outside of where their parents are, they're now expanding the scope of their explored world. And some of you know this. You guys ever ride bikes when you were a kid and you go farther than you're supposed to? Or walk farther than you're supposed to? Or skate farther than you're supposed to? Yeah, they might not have done that. Anybody in here not like push the limits on, on teachers just to see how far you can go or with administrators? I made them, I made one cry. Does that count? Oh, I want to hear that. Tell me. <laughs>
But I don't know, man. That's, that's a hard thing to, to tell somebody in the moment. That, I mean, you ever see somebody like a completely fractured leg and they're screaming in pain? And you're like, you just learned some things. <laughs> like, no, this is this is really good. <laughs> You've learned how to not jump from from table from table to table. <laughs> like your dog trying to be a cat. Exactly. Do you understand me? <laughs> or it's like a dog trying oh, wait, to. Be sorry, a cat. I'm not the. Uh, a is beating. Yeah. Oh, is it like you a dog? Them. Go ahead. Oh, it's like a dog trying to be a cat. You try to fall on their yeah, feet. Yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was like, see, that's why, that's why you know, you're not a cat, you're a dog. Wait, hello? Yeah, direct all your views on that comment to Scanlon Lectures at YouTube. Welcome. <laughs> I have not yet been in the principal's office once this year. I'm proud. That's a record, man. That's a record. <laughs> why were you there? No, I have not be yet been. Oh, you know, why weren't you there? I have been. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like she doesn't want me there. <laughs> you don't feel wanted. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of uh, I forgot what I forgot what uh, philosopher said it. But I it, it's something uh, to the lines of all gods eventually turn into humans. How do you mean? You mean Zora Neale Hurston? Gods always resemble the people who make them. Oh uh, yeah, but I don't know. Too many Hindi people with forearms, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> We're not taking the right acid. <laughs> not that there's a right acid to take, but there is the wrong acid to take. Go ahead. Go for it. Um, and like, eventually, if you're a god, okay, you've experienced everything. And then, well, what if you want to experience pain? Because pain is also experience. If you feel nothing, then life's pretty boring. You experience pain, and then you experience love. You experience hatred, happiness, and stuff. And eventually, you'll just nerf yourself down and down and down until you're a human. So that you appreciate life. You appreciate what you do. You appreciate the things that you feel. And this is you appreciating it. Because you appreciate what you have been to other people. Uh, I, personally, am not great at expressing my emotions. I'm not good at telling people how I feel. But that's because I've always been a caregiver. I've always taken care of my sister, my mom, my brother. I've always done that. But, yeah. So then, so, so then a god, so for, for god to be a god, one of the things is that they actually can't ever learn anything. They have to already know everything. They can't have new experiences. They have to have experienced everything. Because they have to be deep in those omnis. Wow. Omnipotent, omnibenevolent, omniscient. So in order for a god to, to, to maybe, you'd have to say, grow in some way, the god has to become human. In order, to, in order to encounter suffering, in order to encounter love, hate, all of these passions. Interesting. So then, this being the case, the God then has to has to debase themselves to become like us, and not just like us, but become like a lot of us. To become, they have to be rich to know what that's like. They have to be poor to know what that's like. They have to know what it's like to be a social outcast. They have to know what it's like to be loved, in order to relate better to their creation, to understand their creation better. <clears throat> so, in other words, they have to go through the whole gamut of human experience and somehow then translate that into some meaningful form. This is why it is that we think of the artists as gods. Because this is what they do. They create. They go out and they experience the whole spectrum of, of human emotions and human experiences. And then they, they survive it and they come back and they tell us about it. And by the way, that's the last stage of the hero. The hero has to overcome, but the hero also has to return. And has to tell us about it so that we can learn from it. Okay. That's what the artist does. The artist goes out there experiences whatever, comes back and tells us about it so that we know what it's like. It's one of the reasons that we think of, of them as being gods. It's one of the reasons we worship them. Don't you think it's a strange thing that we'll like someone's music and we'll put like posters on the wall? Oh my God. We'll name children after them? <laughs> oh. Because they had a song that we liked when we were 17? That's, and by the way, I'm not saying that like, oh my God, that's so silly. No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying, oh my God, that's so powerful. The person can take, can take an instrument do, and some words and then sing those words in a certain order and we're going to adore them for it. 
and somehow, yeah, I'll leave it at that. It's powerful, not meaningless. It tells us something really important about art and our connection to art and the deification of it. Yes. When he meant, uh, what Sergio said is an example of when he mentions like, um, for a god to like, to feel like more human, he's basically like nerfing himself down. One of the examples I, I would think about that is Superman, to be honest. Because think about it, he's a Kryptonian with super strength, super durable, laser vision, you know, whatever. You never know Superman. Basically, uh, he's all this. But he, he always like struggles against... Lex Luthor, we're basically a human, due to the fact that he he um, uses uh, emotion against Superman. Even though people say, "Yeah, it's kryptonite," but that's interesting. Yeah, but if you think about it, if you think about it, he 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 usually beats Superman in some way, in a mentality way, because I remember in some situations he got the upper, Superman got the upper hand, but Lex Luthor uses. Um, the lives of several people, like literally using them uh, as a way, to, as like like an escape option, and it brings like a stress. The Superman's either is it me or is it or is it them? You gotta choose one. You can't say both, Superman. And then it leads to the situation he goes to save the people. Lex Luthor escapes, so that leads it to him. Oh, so he isn't a god. <laughs> can't do anything. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Finish it up, Aaron. Oh, that was the end. All right, class motto, good enough, yeah.